In our first video chat, we focused on the importance of the first two weeks after birth in getting breastfeeding off to a good start. In our second video chat, we talked about the importance of the hospital stay, what to expect and what to do to establish breastfeeding. In this video chat, we're going to move to surviving the first week at home. Most maternity hospitalizations last only 24 to 48 hours for an uncomplicated birth and only 48 to 72 hours for a cesarean delivery. So you may actually arrive home before the initiation of lactation is complete. You have three important priorities during the first week at home. Breastfeeding your baby frequently and effectively, sleeping efficiently, and taking care of yourself. A key strategy to making all of this work is limiting all visitors to one or two family members or friends who will serve as your helpers during this time and will support these priorities. You will also take your baby to a primary care provider within the first day or two after you go home from the hospital and should prepare information for this visit. So let's talk about breastfeeding your baby frequently and effectively. As your milk comes in, your baby begins to drink more and may sleep for slightly longer stretches, but you should still plan eight to 12 feedings a day. Try to make the feedings as efficient or time-saving as possible by starting the feeding as soon as your baby wakes up and shows signs of eating. Don't change the diaper or clothing right then. Instead, feed your baby immediately and have your helper change the diaper when your baby rests after the first part of the feeding. The diaper change oftentimes awakens the baby to breastfeed a second time. Next, have everything that you need to breastfeed, your pillows, your chairs, your nipple cream, and your water for yourself in one or two spots in the house where you will be feeding so that you don't waste time getting everything set up when your baby is awake and ready to feed. Your baby may still struggle to latch to the breast immediately, taking several minutes to get settled and beginning to drink. Although this is normal, it's easy to think that your baby is rejecting the breast or not liking the milk or not trying hard enough. Instead, your baby is still sorting out how to grasp the nipple and stretch it effectively so that a good latch is created. Be sure to try breastfeeding in different positions because that will minimize the suction pressure being applied to the same part of the breast all of the time. Always use a finger to break your baby's suction, even if it looks like your baby is asleep and not eating. These tips help prevent or treat sore nipples. By 48 to 72 hours after birth, your baby should have a wet diaper with each feeding and several bowel movements throughout the day. The bowel movements will start to change color from dark brown to green and eventually to yellow and are the best indication that your baby is drinking plenty of milk. So the second priority is sleeping. Breastfeeding helps new mothers fall asleep quickly after a feeding once coming to volume has started. This is because the rapid increase in prolactin or the milk making hormone during the feeding works almost like a sleeping pill. So use this natural remedy to fall asleep efficiently, meaning that you go back to sleep quickly after breastfeeding ends. Oftentimes new mothers try to use this valuable sleeping time doing chores that can and should be given to your helpers, such as changing the diapers or doing laundry. Priority number three is taking care of yourself. It is so easy to focus on your baby during this first week and forget the fact that your body has just experienced a tremendous physical and hormonal change. The hormonal changes alone make many mothers feel vulnerable or overly sensitive about their abilities to breastfeed 
and sometimes even to care for a newborn. For example, you may see that your baby has frequent bowel movements, indicating plenty of milk intake, but you think you don't have enough milk when the unavoidable crying and fussiness starts in your baby. It's normal to feel guilty that you don't spend time with your other children or invite family members and friends to welcome the baby. Along with this, most mothers still have pain from the birth, full breasts, and suffer from too little sleep. Remember to take the pain medications that the doctor has prescribed with the comfort of knowing that they will not harm your baby, but they will help your breastfeeding and allow you to care for your baby. Nearly all foods and spices are compatible with breastfeeding. You may still notice uterine cramping and extra bleeding during and right after breastfeeding during this first week at home. A big event during the first week at home is taking your baby for the first health checkup. Standard practice today dictates that your baby's primary care provider will check your baby within a day or two after you go home from the hospital. You can plan for this visit by doing several things. First, when you make the appointment with the primary care provider, tell the office manager that you are bringing a newborn baby and verify that you will not be placed in a waiting room with other children who might be potentially sick. You should be taken directly to the examination room. At this visit, a primary assessment of the care provider is going to be that your baby is drinking enough milk. He or she will ask about the frequency of breastfeeding, wet diapers, the frequency and color of bowel movements, and will check for jaundice. Be ready to share this information. You might even want to take a photo of your baby's most recent bowel movements just in case your baby doesn't have one in the care provider's presence. Most babies, when they go back to the care provider, will weigh less than they did at the time they were weighed in the hospital. Babies seldom gain weight in the first four to five days after birth. And there can also be slight differences between the hospital scale and the office scale. Finally, recognize that nearly all babies are jaundiced after birth, but this doesn't have to be a red flag. Jaundice in the presence of dry diapers and a lack of bowel movements may be a red flag. So to summarize our video chat today, there are four takeaway messages. First, it is very normal for you to feel sensitive and vulnerable during this first week at home. This is due to the tremendous hormonal changes and to the fatigue that you are experiencing. Number two, limit the visitors to helpers who can clean, cook, entertain other children or pets, change diapers, and promote your well being. You do not want or need helpers who want to bottle feed your baby or hold your baby so that you can wash dishes or fold the laundry. Number three, you cannot overfeed your baby during this first week at home. It is normal to have some feedings in which the baby doesn't latch onto the breast immediately. Finding the nipple and beginning to drink milk quickly will become more consistent as the week passes. Finally, prepare for the first well baby checkup by bringing along with you information about the frequency of breastfeedings wet diapers, and bowel movements.